right, and here we go. Spawning down in the bottom left for offside gaming. An offshoot of onside, obviously. It is Firefly in the blue. And his opponent in the top right hand corner with the red protos pieces. We're looking at none other than Jim's main Nexus. Jim. Back to basics. Back to protos versus protos. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything goes back to PvP. Uh, <laughs> this is only our. So after this match, we're only halfway through the PvPs on the day. Mm. Uh, despite finishing three of the matches, we've got another three in the European region. But for now, I'm quite intrigued to see what Jim is going to look like. I know Firefly is very much a wild card in this matchup. He is he is a player that would, against, for example, Max Pax's proxy, or Max Pax's low ground uh, one gate expand, he would proxy both of his gateways on the map. Yeah. He has come up with some very unique and inventive solutions to Max Pax's style of play. And it actually, I think that is part of the reason that Max Pax is starting to high ground expand, where he was always low ground expanding before. I don't think that's the only reason, but I think that is one of the contributing factors is he's like, oh, this has kind of gotten figured out a little bit. So now he drops the gateway on a high ground. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. He has been... Uh changing up his play style a little bit. We bring up Max Pax because his PvP is considered to be amazing, but he's always played it a little bit differently than the other high-ranking players. And Well, so far, um, we have a, a bit of a delay right there on the Cybercore. I was trying to figure out exactly why. I think Jim was just a bit delayed on it. He was just 10 seconds or so later on the Cybercore research, which is never really, or not the, the research so much, but the start of the building itself, which is never really that great of a sign, but shouldn't be the end of the world but it is something that we'll have to keep an eye out on because those little differences and those little timing changes really do add up over the course of a game we have jim going for a cheeky little proxy on the left side is that what we're doing could be he starts up a twilight council and oh is this just going to be for a delayed scout i guess so yeah. yeah yeah i mean it still could be a pylon he still could have plans on doing like a dark shrine or proxying a three third gate and getting very aggressive. Uh, I did cast Jim's qualifying match versus, I believe the player was Kingslayer, and that was a okay. PBT. And he was very decisive. He was like, he, he felt confident with his moves. And then in a, hold that thought, we're actually gonna see a probe leading the charge, but it gets blasted and there's a shield battery, so this should be fine. Uh, Oh, and in fact, Firefly taking a fair bit of damage on one of those Stalkers. Oh, a lot of damage, actually. Yeah, you it's have to be... target fire here if you want to do anything, right? Just standing there. No, we're going to actually proxy, by the way, a Dark Templar Shrine and then mm. also a gateway right next to it. So he was thinking about proxying it over at, I guess, that top left end base, but he decided, no, I'm going to go one expansion further south. This is ever so slightly north of the natural, though. So if Firefly sniffs this out... That proxy is in a world of trouble, but luckily here for Jim, those stalkers are just going straight back home. Maybe an hallucinated Phoenix though can, can pick up on that. Yeah, it'll depend if he decides to go either A across the map or B try and uh, skirt around on the bottom right. This is a this is a build that Zest used to do all the time. Uh proxying that additional gateway and the dark shrine with it. And with no robotics facility, we are we're about 10 seconds away from hitting GG time right here. We are so close to this actually just being game over. There is no form of detection right here for Firefly whatsoever. He's looking for a third Nexus. Now Jim is feigning that he needed to back up, but he actually wanted that base, right? He wanted to make sure that that expansion is down. And, and at this point, there's no Stargate. There's no Robo facility. So there is zero detection. There's no force. There's nothing. That means that Firefly is going to have to GG out in three, two... Okay, okay, no, I started too early. Maybe uh, you can give it a shot, Steadfast. <laughs> I think it's going to be 5 0 5 15. <laughs> well, now there's one in the main base. He desperately did start up a forge. Obviously, this is an important tournament, so he does not want to tap out. But the problem is there is no detection. In He's the meantime, there's so also dead. stalkers over at the third base. Yeah, invisible units are good when you don't have any vision. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he hasn't GG'd. Um, 
because that robotics facility has already been depowered. He's going to build... Okay, he builds a forge, and he's got a cannon. Oh, Blink yep. even gets denied. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Look at this. The DTs, they're just killing the units. Yeah, in the meantime, the third Nexus has also died, so this is yeah. an absolute disaster. Wow. It happens sometimes. You get caught off guard by a cheese, and you didn't go for a Stargate. GG is cold. You just have no detection at all. No Robo Facility, no Stargate. And just like that, Jim wins game number one. Hmm. Okay, well, that's how it's done, apparently, so fast. Yeah, very well done. Uh, obviously, that was a build order win because there was no detection, and proxy DTs that are unscouted is... <laughs> well, if you can't see them, you, you can't hit them. But that's still very nice for Jim. That's a, that's a big confidence booster. That's going to start him off real strong. And if he were to pull an upset versus Firefly, because Firefly, I do think, is one of the heavy favorites to make the playoffs and yep. one of the players that can definitely give a give Oliveira a run for his money in the region i mean this is this is kind of exciting for jim no absolutely um protos versus protos is a very volatile matchup but these days usually these sort of builds are countered but yeah firefly clearly having a bit of a misread on what that game was like and he was aiming for a very nice and early third nexus and then found himself against a bunch of invisible, yeah, a bunch of invisible units. It Invis happens sometimes. It's one of those unfortunate moments, but you, know, you brought it up. Zest is a big fan of that, and it still works. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's... Uh, it, it, it's, it's so uncommon for it to happen at this level these days, but it is yeah. not... It can it's never be ruled out. It's exactly. You, you have to respect the potential that your opponent could just do something like that and if you don't well that's this is kind of the result uh but i'm not too concerned honestly just yet it's no ugly for sure but we're a ways away from this becoming a problem just yet absolutely now you just need to win two games in a row i do still think that firefly is the favorite going into each individual match but now suddenly, though, Jim does have, well, more cheese potential, right? He's going to be able to bring more cheese if he wants to. And, um, yeah, it's uh, up to Firefly to play a safer build, something that is going to be a bit more well-rounded against practically everything. But then, obviously, if you're going up... If you're trying to be safe against everything, you usually end up losing against an economy-based build. And at the very minimum, this is going to give Jim a lot of maneuvering, right, in this series. He can do whatever he likes here in game number two. Could play super heavy into the eco. Could play another cheese if he wants to. Well, that's quite a bit of variety here. It's going to be Firefly who will have to play defensively. So it's a good uh, confidence booster for sure here. Yeah, it's an amazing confidence booster. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to be getting into Oceanborn as soon as the players are ready. It's it's funny that Oceanborn has become the like the standard map now, yeah. um, and it makes <laughs> sense. It honestly makes a ton of sense. You've got, it's the map that players are, are super familiar with. Obviously, it's going to be one of the four that will be picked. Uh, Site Delta, I'm that would be the other one I would expect that people would be like, yeah, this is fine. But a lot of people don't like playing low ground in PvP. Yeah. So they don't want to have to be, you know, confined to having to do the, the one gate expand. Uh, so as long as one player doesn't want to play that, it'll get vetoed. And then Golden Aura is kind of a very turtly map, so that might make sense that that one might get vetoed. It's and then Alcyone it makes sense. I mean, Alcyone, yeah. we played it last, so it was, <laughs> it was in there. That's also certainly a, a popular map choice here if you don't want to play anything all too crazy. Either way, Oceanborn is going to be game number two, and spawning right here in the bottom right hand corner, we have none other than Firefly in the blue. And his opponent spawning up at the top left for PCEC, which I don't know what it stands for, but it is Jim. They got a cute little, like, gummy bear as their logo. Look at that. And that little guy. What's he doing? Is that, a, is that a teddy bear? Is that a gummy bear? Who knows? On his Liquipedia page, apparently it's Team So Far Away. At least... According to his Liquipedia page, I'm not 100% sure if it is completely up to date, no? Huh? Yeah. Fair enough. 
I, oh, I actually no. It says it says it says team so far away, and he apparently there's a, there's a little bit of a. Ah, yeah. So it says under his team section on Liquipedia that he's in team so far away, but then in his history, he apparently left that team on the 5th of March. And indeed, he is part of PCEC, which is a Chinese semi pro team. Yes, okay. they did try and qualify for uh, World Team League. I don't. Yeah, I think they got eliminated before Code A. Uh, okay. But I'm not 100% certain on that. I, I could be incorrect. Uh, Code A, there's a ton of teams that kind of spring up to try and qualify for Code A. Uh, a bunch of players that, you know, maybe don't have contracts with uh, big name teams. They'll they'll get together and they'll do their thing and see if they can uh, see if they can put together a, an impressive run and, you know, maybe make Code A. And then if they do really well, maybe actually make it into the World Team League proper. So it's kind of neat. Neat to mm -hmm. see the effects of that. Uh, we do see Firefly was like prioritizing minerals just a little bit more in terms of mining. He actually didn't fully saturate his gases right away. Not the biggest of deals, but it, it does, you know, kind of show itself in uh, a little bit of extra gas going towards that sentry for Jim and still having almost the same amount of gas as his opponent. Absolutely. Sentry, of course, very nice to have right now. We could already see it being quite tanky as well in that previous game. The Stalker now is going to be a necessity to try and get rid of that pylon. Both players just trying to be a bit annoying, right? That's, mas that's basically the main goal here in the earlier stages of this matchup. Right now, though, Jim is going to start banking up quite a bit of money. Oh. Firefly does not actually cancel the pylon. I think I think Jim is okay with that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think generally speaking, you're... It's obviously annoying to have your Nexus delayed, you know, an extra 5, 10 seconds, but... I don't really think it's worthwhile to let the pylon finish. Maybe he was thinking there was less units. Like, maybe he was thinking Jim was cutting combat units more so than he was. Yeah. Or or maybe... It is... Honestly, it is possible that he just actually didn't click to cancel. Um, that's... Are you suggesting pro gamers make mistakes? <gasps> I would never. That. <laughs> it, that is a, not allowed. In a game where you have to do... To be competitive, <laughs> approximately five things per second. You're saying that the pro gamer missed one of those things? Oh my know, god! Man. It is possible. I I'm with you. It could have just been a mistake. Maybe he did it on purpose though. We did see a couple of the gateway units getting canceled as well earlier on in this tournament so far, right? Where they start up a unit in the gateway and then they cancel it for the ever so slightly faster nexus. So mm -hmm. there are still a few considerations here that Firefly could have made, but yeah, I think it's most likely a mistake. Yeah, um, hopefully it's not an indication of nerves. He's been a player that despite not having any like offline experience, it feels like he kind of has a little bit of swagger to him. Like it feels yeah. like he's like very confident player. He does things that are super wild and out of the ordinary. And for example, he is going to be going for a little bit of a sentry stalker push here. Obviously he's got the Twilight Council behind this, but I think he wants to see if he can, uh, one, was looking to cancel an early base Two. Oh, he's going to drop some cheeky force fields and grab his opponent's sentries. Oh, Nelly, that's a nice pickoff. Yep, they were out of range of that shield battery. A little bit too adventurous, and he immediately gets punished for it. Third Nexus starts up. This time around, we do have a nice and early uh, robo facility as well, by the way. Firefly. Not messing around with any of those units once again. And this fight, yeah, it's, I mean, it's also going really well right now for the blue protos. Yeah, he ends up getting a, a two-for-one trade right there, which is really just fantastic. It started off with him not having the best concave. One of his stalkers that he was trying to micro back getting caught. But it actually turned into uh, a very good, kind of a strong out micro. Like, that was actually just Firefly then out microing him after the first stage of that fight. Uh, and Jim kind of lacking a little bit in the micro department there. Now, where Jim has a big advantage, his plus one is very fast. But yeah. I still like the tempo and I like the the way Firefly is played. He is going to get into the natural. Only going to be able to get three probes with this. Eh, it's not so bad for two adepts. I mean, it's, it's definitely better for Jim, but it does keep his economy a little bit, you know, stilted and it, it provides a scout, sees that that blink timing is done and Firefly is going to know, like, yeah, 
You've got Blink. Cool. Okay. So do I. Let's go Blink Stalkers. Yep. We're going to be doing this Blink Stalker dance here in just a moment. But with Firefly having a pretty sizable advantage at that point, or at this point here, it's going to be quite tricky for Jim to defend against it. So he's going into charge together with the Immortals as well. Obviously, he will have the advantage, assuming that the fight is going to take well place on his side of the map, which it most likely will. He's going to have the advantage of being the defender. So far, though, no static defense yet over at the third base, is there? Oh, there's one shield battery, okay. But at the very least, he's got something there, but that's very easy to pick off if Firefly manages to get close to it. Yeah, uh, we are going to see Jim going straight up into all of his additional gateways before taking the fourth base because he's kind of behind from those early skirmishes, from those early sentry losses, and doesn't necessarily feel like he can do too much. Force fields? Ah, that's a... I think he was just literally being like, oh, you're right there. I gotta go. You know, bye, yeah. see you later. Um, yeah, didn't... sometimes you can maybe slice off a unit or something, right? But he's mostly yeah. just threatening because he still has so many gateways on the production tag. Yes. So he just wanted to scare his opponent a little bit, make him sweat, and ultimately really just transition towards a very quick fourth nexus and then additional gateways. Uh, it is worth noting, by the way, that Jim is playing two gas. So he is going to be going very heavy into charge lots behind this with a, mm -hmm. a significant delay on tech and a lower stalker count in general so firefly of course the standard relative standard is to play three gas as well and you're still probably going to be going for charge lots but because firefly got those early advantages he felt comfortable and confident to go for the fourth nexus before adding on his additional gateways and that's a that's a big advantage when your opponent is trying to play this high charge lot style it's it's going to be really tricky for Jim to find an opening or find momentum. No, you are absolutely right there. So Firefly is building up that economy as well at the bottom base. Luckily for Jim, though, he did not get that expansion denied. Not adding on any additional gases, though. So really just sticking around with two gas this entire time. He does have those faster upgrades. So ground weapon, uh, weapons level two is now already finishing here for Jim. So those zealots are going to be packing a punch. He's not really going to have a lot of unit variety here, right? So Firefly can start preparing for that too. Already he's got the Templar Archives here. Archons are not a bad choice whatsoever. And even though he's a little bit ahead, Jim, that is, as far as the upgrades go, it's nothing really to write home about. It's about a, maybe a 20 second lead or so. Yeah, and if he can't force a fight, you know, in basically right this instant, that it, the lead evaporates and it's going to be a big yep. tech lead. There's going to be Archons to deal with the mass charge lot of Jim. Whereas the mass charge lot of Firefly, I mean, it's there's no real answer to it. Ooh, Firefly gonna get in here. Will depower two gateways right away. And this is very dangerous for Jim. Meanwhile, there's a cannon on the other side that's gonna help defend this. This is gonna get actually super chaotic right now. Yeah, Jim should be stepping forward with his main army. Now he steps forward again, but I think he could have gone after that Nexus at the bottom of the map. Said we're apparently aiming for a bit of a main fight. Couple stalkers in the main base are going to be able to make short work of those zealots. Zealots in blue also helping out, of course, cleaning up all of those units. And in the meantime, Firefly is still demolishing that main mineral line. Oh, Jim is in so much trouble here. Hallucinated Archons just to <laughs> rub a little bit of additional salt in the wound. Makes it impossible for really for Jim to engage. And he decides to recall with some of those units. But uh, unless we can chase down... Okay, getting the prism is nice. Yeah, but I mean, he recalls. Yeah. And he just lost so much economy. Firefly didn't really lose anything of value. I. Ah, uh, oh man, I, I don't know. He's got a million minerals in the bank, too, by the way. We really need to make sure that we start spending that here ASAP because you know Firefly is 100% coming at this point in yes. time. I mean, he should certainly be at least aiming for a bunch of worker kills, if not a Nexus itself. If not, honestly, the game, right? So there's four no, additional I, I, gateways coming yeah. up. Oh, Dying. and the force fields, oh. they're just going to lock him out there's completely. No yeah, exactly. Jim Firefly is, is chilling. Absolutely. There is another Nexus just fired up here to the right of this location. But I think at this point, that Firefly has more than enough units. He's playing this cautiously because we have perfect vision of the map, of course. We can see exactly what's going on. Uh, but with a 50 supply lead, he can't really lose anymore in this particular matchup. Unless there's like a half dozen disruptors waiting off to the <laughs> side. He's probably waiting like, hey, where, where's all your gas going? How do you, how do you not have Archons? How do you not have disruptors? Well, 
Turns out there were only two gas geysers in total here for Jim. Yeah, that was uh, very well done from Firefly. And we can this this is why I wasn't particularly worried after game one for Firefly, yeah. at least. Like, he is really, he's got some very funky builds and he's very aggressive, but he's also a very solid player. And he is certainly capable of maintaining that poise. And uh, right now, I'm, I kind of hope we see something a little bit another curveball from Jim if yeah. he's gonna he doesn't necessarily have to cheese but I do think he's he's gonna have to do something to find an advantage somewhere whether that be you know a greedy build order or maybe some hidden tech maybe proxy oracles but Firefly just looked way too solid in that straight up macro game well you're absolutely right playing a straight up game here Maybe not necessarily the greatest choice against a very solid macro protos. By the way, shout out as well to the guys from the Liquipedia page, because apparently the Liquipedia page of Jim has already been updated. It now says indeed that his team oh. is PCEC. So those guys, the unsung heroes of the StarCraft community. You know, <laughs> I used to think that websites like Aligalek and, for example, Team Liquid, for like the first five years of me watching this game, I thought they were automatically updated. I didn't realize that this was a thing that people had to manually edit because you never really hear a lot of people talking about it. But there's guys out there watching every single tournament, updating literally everything on the fly. And uh, apparently, same can be said for Jim's Liquipedia page right now. Ah, that's so cool. The The Liquipedia uh, folks are tireless. They yes. are just an absolutely... It's got to be one of the best you know places on the internet in terms of just the consistency they're so quick yeah like it, it's they're so quick they're it's a free service it's it's just an amazing thing and and huge shout out to the liquipedia guys and there's there's so many of them uh but thank you so much for what you what y'all do so indeed pcec is going to be jim's current team and uh well, we'll have to see if Jim can bring it back here. He looked pretty solid in game number one, catching his opponent off guard with a bunch of Dark Templar. Wanted to just play a straight up macro game in game number two, and he didn't do poorly. It's just that he didn't do quite as well as Firefly did. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is sometimes you can feel confident in your play, but it doesn't matter if you feel confident if your opponent is just straight up better. Uh, exactly, now, yeah. There's no guarantee that that's the case, but game two felt like a pretty solid, pretty solid statement from uh, from Firefly. But let's see, because we have spawning up the top left for PCEC. It is Jim. And his opponent down here in the bottom right hand corner. It is Firefly. In the blue. I always have the... Um, I always have the instinct when I hear the name Jim or say the name Jim specifically to say Jim Rising. I always, <laughs> my brain just wants to put Rising in there. I always immediately think of Pokemon Jims. Because oh. I've always wondered why the pronunciation of G-Y-M and J-I-M are basically identical in English. Makes no sense in my mind whatsoever, but I guess it is what it is. <laughs> it's be it's because our language is broken. It's just yeah. it's fundamentally designed to be just a hassle. <laughs> there's there's somebody behind the scenes designing the language. <laughs> we need to find to a guy who did us. this. <laughs> uh, I guess we are gonna have to go after a lot of people at that point, huh? But... It's the same guy that made the original swarm host, isn't it? <laughs> He's responsible for the English language. The fire, or was it fire? Uh, fire no, it was cake. it mana versus fire cake? That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, not firefly. That's that's the <laughs> Protoss player. <laughs> Haven't heard of fire cake ever since that game. Really. <laughs> he was he was a really good player for I think the very beginning of Legacy of the Void. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching the very beginning, and him and Solar were like the two zergs like they were the the two zergs at the very very beginning and then firefly or fire damn it there i did it fire cake <laughs> was like oh man i modeled my style after solar and then they played each other in a tournament um because they were both playing really really well like it was like round of 16 or round of eight 
And uh, they both did the same thing, except the first deviation was one of them did like a Baneling drop and then one of them did a Roach drop. And it was Solar who did the Roach drop. And that was where it was like, ah, okay, yes, we can see that one of these is the student and one of these is the master. <laughs> Sense traded to retirement, apparently, from that moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jim, by the way, going into a Stargate opener here this time around. So mm -hmm. a little bit of a change. This so is you were talking about him uh, throwing maybe a bit of a curveball. Is this what you had in mind? Or? Yeah, and especially because it's off of a Stalker Sentry opener. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is going to be the kind of thing that, you know, maybe could catch an opponent off guard because maybe they see the hallucinated Phoenix that uh, maybe Firefly sees the hallucinated Phoenix that Jim went for and, you know, is like, oh, okay, you're not going for any super quick tech behind this. The problem, of course, is that Ooh. Firefly. Oh, no. Whoa. Oh, well, well that's a different that problem. Out of the window now, unless these adepts don't quite get within range right there of the Stargate, they've already seen it. Yeah, this is yeah, it's... really quite unfortunate because. That now makes, well, oh. the defense so much easier. Six probes as well is a lot, and one of them even got out. Oh, man, that is so much damage. Um, I was going to say, it would it would already be a little bit of a problem because there's double oracle or double sentry on the other side. Um, but now it's so much worse that he didn't even have to hallucinate, and he was able yep. to get that info. Like, this is... This is just a disaster for Jim. Down 10 workers already. Shield battery and the natural to support those sentries. Uh, oh, he's not even able to get the probe there. This is... Nope. This, this is, is such right a brutal... Yeah. This is such a brutal position. So, Firefly is on the back. It is going into that blink research. The only problem here, I guess, is that he doesn't have detection. So, maybe he's thinking about game number one, but... Other than that, he's, uh, no, he's not going to need it, obviously, in this particular match. Uh, I think attacking, as soon as that blink research is finished, is an excellent opportunity. There will be a couple oracles out. You always have to respect those, because they can still swoop in and kill an entire mineral line if you're not careful. But um, this is certainly going to be an uphill battle right now for Jim, who's behind as far as that tech goes here, because he will probably want to go... Oh, no, don't, oh, no, no, don't lose it! Oh. <sighs> Losing one of those oracles is... Well, I don't want to be too dramatic and cool with game deciding, but it would pretty much be the end of that aggression. Anyways, he probably, Jim that is, wants to get into Blink here eventually himself too, but he's going to be so far behind in that department. Oh. Decides to go for a third Nexus. Firefly is going for a proxy gate. I think that this is uh, going to be nearly impossible to hold. Yeah, th this is this is such a scary situation. Uh, if Jim goes right into Immortals, Maybe there's a chance. Yeah. That's what he does. Now oh, Blink is oh. it, but he loses one of the oracles. Good targeting right there by Firefly. Very well done. Uh, we're at about a uh, halfway right now on one immortal. This third Nexus is certainly not going to happen. No, there's yeah, he he has to give that up. But behind this, Firefly's already got his third Nexus down. Obviously it's a little bit later, but I don't think Jim can contest this, but at the same thing, I don't think he, at the same time, I don't think he can let it go either. We are gonna see oh Lovely a nice immortal field. keeping that uh or a nice force field keeping that immortal at bay. And oh that's a very aggro blink, but yeah, there's not enough to actually cover the immortal, and with the Guardian Shield, he still has enough stalkers with the help of those sentries to win this fight too. Firefly is just gonna take this one down. Jim had a there tough decision to either give up the Nexus and fall way behind, further behind in the game, because he was already behind, or fight and hope for...